our plan today is to take a look at what we call our trig identities, or at least a few of them. There's actually a few more here, but um, these are going to be the three that we're going to focus on today, or the three groups that we're going to focus on today, and we're going to use these to actually solve some problems. So uh, if you have, if you found these, take a look at them. If not, then you may want to jot these down. But this is basically what we've got. We've got the reciprocal identities, we've got the quotient identities, and we've also got the Pythagorean identities, which I'm cut. Let's see if I can get them all on the screen here for you. So over time, you are going to have these memorized. You may not have them memorized right now, and they may look foreign to you, but in the end, uh, you should actually have these committed to memory. My hope is that we'll be doing enough, and there will be enough repetition in that these will all commit to, to memory. So um, what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at an example of a problem that actually requires these trig identities to, to solve. So, so let's take a look here. It says if the cosine of x equals negative 3 over 5 and x, and remember x represents some angle, is located in quadrant 4, then what are the values of the other five trig functions? So here we've got a list of our trig functions. Now keep in mind, we're not solving for x. Okay, we want to know what these trig values are, okay, these trig functions are. Um, and as we are told, cosine in the beginning, we are told cosine is already equal to negative 3 over 5. So we can go ahead and put that in there. Now, what we're going to want to do here is take a look at these trig identities, or these trig um, yeah, these trig identities. So I'm going to slide this over here so we can kind of get a look. Now, because cosine is equal to 3 over 5, what we can deduce then is that, all right, so to figure out what secant is, we can then use um, some of these other identities here. Now, you may remember that simply to figure out the relationship of these two is that they're inverses of each other. So, And that's essentially what this reciprocal identities telling us. Because cosine is 1 over secant, secant is 1 over cosine. So all we then have to really do is flip-flop our cosine value and we've got our secant value. Now to solve that out, um, because secant, and I can solve that out right here and I'll write out what secant is equal to. So secant of x is equal to 1 over cosine of x. So this is our tr this is our trig value. So what we want to do is so we're looking for the value of secant which based on prior knowledge we figured out was 5 over 3. Now we just want to kind of use our trig identities to kind of figure it out. So we get 1 over now the cosine value is negative 3 over 5. So I'm going to replace cosine of x with negative 3 over 5. Now when you're dividing, remember, it's you take the top, you copy the top, then the division becomes multiplication, and then you flop the bottom, so 5 over 3. Multiply those together, you get negative 5 over 3, which is what we have originally put. So what we're going to do now is we need to then figure out these other trig values. Now, if you're given cosine, I always recommend looking for sine first. That's usually um, the best way to go. You can do other methods. You can use um, any of the other trig methods or trig identities that we have here to figure out tangent, cotangent, cosecant. But I always look for sine and cosine first. I always find that kind of easier to start with. So let's take a look here. Now. We don't really use the reciprocal identities all that much because we've remembered that to get from one to the other, all we have to do to get from cosine to secant is to flip it. And same here. If we figure out sine, all we have to do to get cosecant is flip our value of sine. So that's pretty basically what these reciprocal identities are telling us. So mainly, we're going to want to look at the quotient identities and the Pythagorean identities. Now, if you look at the quotient identities, we are given cosine. So we could figure out that, but then we have these two unknowns. So we're not really going to want to deal with quotient identities yet. We're going to start with the Pythagorean identities. So if we're given cosine, 
in looking at this, we see that the only thing that has cosine in it is this one. So um, we're going to go ahead and use this first Pythagorean identity. So I'll go ahead and write that down so I don't have to keep going back and forth. So let's say we had sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals 1. So now what we need to do is simply just substitute the co value of cosine into this equation. So we're going to have sine squared of x, not much we can do with that, but now instead of cosine squared of x, we're going to say negative 3 over 5 squared equals 1. So now when we simplify this a little bit, we get the sine squared of x plus 3 over 5 squared becomes 9 over 25. That equals 1. So now we just need to solve for, ultimately, as you can see, we want to get the sine of x by itself. So we need to basically solve for the sine of x. So to do that, it's just simple algebra. Subtract this from both sides. Now again, because that's 1, you want a common denominator. So we could say 25 over 25, 9 minus 25 is 16 over 25 equals sine squared of x. And then just like if you had x squared to get that square out, we take the square root of both sides. And x equals 4 over, or sine of x is equal to 4 over 5. So we've got r 4 over 5. We can come back to our trig functions here, and or trig values, and put in 4 over 5. Now, as we said with the reciprocal identity, we could solve it the same way we did down here. Or you can just remember all you have to do to get the cosecant is to flip it. All right. So now we know sine and cosine. So we need to now figure out what tangent is and cotangent. So again, there's a few, if we look back at our list of identities here, we've got a few that can help us out. We've got tangent is equal, so we could use another some more Pythagorean identities. We can plug in, um, since we know what secant is, secant is, that is 5 over 3, we could plug that in and solve for tangent, which would be fine. Or you could, since we know now know cosecant, we can plug that in here. But since we just did the Pythagorean identity here, I want to give us, I want us to try the quotient identity. So let's go ahead and use this tangent of x and say tangent of x is equal to sine x over cosine of x. So now that we're using this one, all we want to do is plug in, again, what we know. So we don't know anything about tangent, but we do know, in looking above here, that sine is equal to 4 over 5. So instead of sine, I'm going to put 4 over 5. Then the other thing we need is cosine, which in the beginning we're given negative 3 over 5. Actually this this should be a positive sorry go back and fix that it should be a positive and I'll explain why in a minute so cotangents positive 3 over 5 so I'll write that 3 over 5 so now all we have to do to figure out tangent is just this simple division of fractions so again we copy the top dot because remember, the, to divide fractions, you copy dot flop. Um, so we got that. Then we flip them, flip the bottom. So that became 5 over 3. Cross cancel and multiply, we get 4 over 3. So our tangent is 4 over 3. So then we go ahead and put 4 over 3 for the tangent. And then the cotangent, you just flip that, and that becomes 3 over 4. So now, even as far as the calculations, we're all we're all set. We're done. 
we got all the values here. But notice, we've only really focused, if we look back at the question on this first part, we haven't even look at, looked at this x is located in quadrant 4. What that's saying is the angle x is located in the fourth quadrant. So if you go back to our basic trig that we've learned, okay, we've got our four quadrants. Now, and then our little acronym that we learned, all students take calc. Now again, this is saying all the trig values are positive in the first quadrant, sine is positive in the second, trig or er, tangent is positive in the third, and cosine is positive in the fourth. And that's why I had to flip this, because I just realized it was negative. But we're, because we're in the fourth quadrant, that should have been positive. Um, so because we are located in the fourth quadrant, that means we're talking about this quadrant, cosine is the only positive trig value. The rest of them, because they're not listed here, they are all going to be negative in that quadrant. So whatever angle we're dealing with is in this quadrant. When you take the tangent or sine of that angle in this quadrant, it's going to be, it's going to come out with a negative value. So that's the basic way to solve and basic way to use these trig values. So if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email or a Vokey or a text message, anything that um, will help you. I'd be happy to record another video for you if you have certain questions or maybe it's just a simple um, explanation that's needed. So take care and good luck with the rest of the assignment.